welcome to the We Talk Health podcast, the official podcast for West Tennessee Healthcare. Please be advised that this podcast is not intended to replace any medical advice. Always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing said in this podcast is intended to supersede or supplement the direction of your medical caretakers. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at we talk health podcast at gmail.com and we will do our best to answer any questions you may have. Welcome to another episode of We Talk Health. My name is Will Cashagro, and today we are going to be talking about the virtual visitation program that West Tennessee Healthcare can offer its patients. Joining me today is Gina Ng. She is a virtual visitation nurse navigator. Gina, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for coming on today. Thank you. Absolutely. So I mentioned virtual visitation program. Can you kind of give me a definition of exactly what that is? Sure. The virtual visitation program is a service that is available here at Jackson General Hospital. It provides a way for patients and their families to see and talk with each other. Okay. It gives them a way to connect using electronic devices when they cannot visit with each other in person. Oh, great. Okay. So who is it available for? This service, it's available for patients and their families, like I said, that cannot visit in person with each other. Okay. And right now, in today's time, it's really being utilized a whole lot for the COVID patients. Uh, that makes sense. Keeping everyone safe and being able to connect with their families is absolutely important, especially if patients have COVID-19. So yes, uh, it's great that we're able to offer that. So is it only available for COVID-19 patients? No, it is not exclusively for the COVID patients. It is available to most of patients and their families in which there are other circumstances that may prevent the patient from having visitors or the family being able to come to the hospital to see the patient. So it's available for others like that. Great. So where did the virtual visitation program come from or stem from? The virtual visitation really came from our management team here at Jackson General Hospital. Okay. I think that they were able to see the need for that when COVID came into play and Mm -hmm. that the families couldn't see their patients on a regular basis. This just provided an avenue for that. That's great. And I think that goes out to our management team here at the hospital. Yeah, that's awesome. So you said that it's available for more than just COVID-19 patients. Is there like a certain group of patients who are able to use it? Yes. If you've got family member that are out of state and they can't be here at the hospital, okay. it's available for that. I can see probably in the future where elderly patients with elderly spouses that are unable to get out due to inclement weather and things like that, oh, okay. and they can't see their spouses, it would be available for patients like that or other circumstances that might prevent a patient from having a visitor in the room, maybe to help promote the health of that patient to keep so much traffic in the room yeah. out or down. I can see the virtual visitation being utilized in those areas. Okay, that's awesome. So what sort of technology or equipment do families of patients need to have? They need to have either a smartphone, an iPhone, a computer, or an iPad. Okay. Uh, The hospital uses iPads, and so they need a device that will allow them to download the Zoom app. Uh, That's the app that the hospital uses. Mm -hmm. So they're going to need that device that allow them to do that. Okay. Typically, you can download Zoom for free. There's no cost to that the only cost would be having your own device odds are you're going to have that device anyway that's correct and we tell people too if they try to download the zoom app and it asks for money that they've got the wrong app the zoom for cloud meeting app is normally free and that's the one they need to download definitely a good thing to keep in mind how many tablets is jackson general utilizing right now for the virtual visitation program quite a few we have five tablets in our office right now that we keep and maintain right there in the nurse navigation office okay but the covid floor do have their own iPads on okay. each floor. So in the event that a nurse navigator is not available or we have an iPad that goes down or we have somebody else up there that needs to do a Zoom visit at the same time, mm-hmm. they do have those iPads available on the COVID units to be utilized. Okay. Great. I assume all these iPads, after they're being used, are wiped down, sanitized, so they're able to be used for the next patient. Oh, yes. When we go into a room, they are put in a bag. Okay. That will keep them clean. And then once we come out, we do sanitize them and then recharge them for use again. So do you guys have a record of maybe how many families have already used the program? It's quite a few. I would say on a weekly basis right now, like I said, being utilized primarily with the COVID patients, Mm -hmm. we're running anywhere between 70. And this past week, we did 148 visits. Wow. So on average, 70 to 148 visits per week. 
That's a lot. That's, that's really great that we're able to offer our patients and their families that slight level of comfort, even if, if they can't be there with them in person. It's great that they can yes, sir. communicate via technology. So is there a cost for families to use the program or use the iPads? It is a service provided right here at Jackson General. It is free of charge to okay. our patients and our family members that we serve here at the hospital. That's great. Is there a certain like time limit that each patient is able to use the tablets? Primarily, the visits run about 10 minutes or less apiece. Okay. Uh, we do obtain permission from the patient staff nurse before we go in to do a visit just okay. to make sure that the patient is able to do the visit and we're not going to compromise anything there or get in the way of their health care. That's great. And then roughly about 10 minutes or less on a visit. Of course, you know, things are subject to change due to situations, but sure. that, that is normally the time limit, 10 minutes or less. Okay. So say, for example, I had a family member who was in the hospital and they had COVID-19 or they didn't and they just wanted to utilize the virtual visitation program. How would I, as a family member, utilize that? Who would I contact? One of the best ways is, and one of the easiest ways is to remember, is just to let the patient staff nurse know okay. that you are interested in doing a virtual visitation visit with the patient. The staff nurses up here have been really great to contact our office and let us know who's interested. And then one of the nurse navigators will call the family member that's requesting the visit, mm -hmm. and then we will get that set up with them. Another way is to call the hospital operator okay. and to let them know that you're interested in virtual visitation or a Zoom visit, and okay. they'll connect you with us. And we have three contact numbers if you're interested in those. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> I'll actually plug these numbers at the bottom in the description. Okay. So listeners, you can find that there as well. My personal contact number here at the hospital is going to be 693-1312. I have another navigator, Rhonda Downing, that is working with me as well. Her number is 693-1128. And Jennifer Ayers, her number is 697-8296, and we're your three nurse navigators here for the hospital. Fantastic. Nurse navigators are available to receive and return phone calls to schedule virtual visits Monday through Friday from 930 till 4. And then once that we make contact with you, a nurse navigator will explain how the visits are done. We like to do a practice session with anybody that's not familiar with Zoom or how the visits should run to get them familiar yeah. and with contacting and getting connected with us. And then what we'll do is schedule a visit and then facilitate the visit for you. That's great that you guys are able to work. Well, Gina, this has been great information to have. Thanks so much. And families out there, if you're listening, if you're interested in learning more about the virtual visitation program, give one of the phone numbers on the bottom of the description a call. They can kind of walk you through how it looks and how it works. And feel free to utilize this program if you have anyone in the hospital at Jackson General, COVID-19 patient or not. Uh, it's, it's available for everyone, and it's a great service to use. Gina, thanks so much again for coming in today, and this has been another episode of We Talk Health.